before I start uh, the, my uh, presentation, I want to make uh, a couple of uh, disclaimer. Um, number one is the, the 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 content that I'm sharing about the the project, uh, uh, the uh, Anacostia Watershed Restoration, Prince George's County. Um, that comes from my work at um, at Army Corps of Engineers. But beyond that, I'm, I'm sharing my personal and professional um, experience and and uh, the, the the knowledge that I carry all my um, career. So um, the the Army Corps of Engineers doesn't necessarily uh, endorse uh, the opinion and knowledge that I share all the time, <laughs> other than the 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 data that I am going to present it by the um, presented about this particular project. So that's first one. And the second one I want to uh, to to, uh, to give it to you is I'm an engineer. Um, I have uh, I have worked with many other professions, but uh, I'm, a, I'm a primarily an engineer. So uh, my view of certain areas and and certain aspects are very limited I'm not knowledge as well. So you have to bear with me. Um, uh, as Anne mentioned, and I joined uh, Army Corps, uh, just finished uh, nine months of service there. Um, and But I have been, uh, entire my career, I'm working with the government and other organizations. Um, Anacostia is not new for me. Um, when I worked at Tetra Tech um, in uh, the, the, the Tetra Tech, I was the program manager, um, uh, managing the contract that we had with Prince George's County uh, for about 11 years. In between 2004 and 2014, uh, we've been um, helping the county. I mean, Tetra Tech continued to be helping the county, but I was the program manager between 2004 and 2014, um, including many work that I have uh, contributed there, um, total maximum lady load and their NPDES permit, um, including the WIP, Watershed Implementation Plan, um, th that involves the, the entire county. So having said that, let's move to, um, I have a, I have really put this outline to, to show you what I'm going to talk today. First, I'm going to talk about uh, background uh, of this specific project and Army Corps of Engineers role in Anacostia. And then I touch a little bit more into what this project is about um, and then what you uh, could expect in uh, Northwest branch specifically under the project. So th these two are more specific to the Army Corps of Engineers project. Um, and, and, and the other, other things that I would want to share with you, I, I know that you are all familiar with this one, but I won't really touch these issues that we have and, and link that to the sources of the problem so that we understand the issue and the uh, and the, the all the way to the sources so that we can be really prepared ourselves uh, to sustain this uh, restoration effort uh, for a long time so that the, the the some of the, the, the this um the how the, the linkage between uh, the the issue and and the, and the, the sources come from my dissertation or my um uh, my experience, I have been working all along. So, um, so we I share with you because I thought that it is very relevant, uh, very very uh, very relevant to this particular one. Then we can have this discussion. Um, as Army Corps of Engineer, Army Corps of Engineers is the the engineer of the government. So, as the federal government, we have to have an authority to get into uh, any effort that we do. Um, on this particular one, we really have the authority. That's why Army Corps of Engineers, uh, uh, we are engaging in this restoration effort. Um, I don't want to get into this uh, too uh, too much into detail, but I just wanted to give you why, without because as a federal government, we have to have an authority to work on things um, uh, that comes from the Congress for us to engage. So that's the, with that one we are getting into, but more specifically into this particular project, um, the, the purpose is to restore ecological function 
um, structure and health in uh, selected reaches, which is mainly northwestern branches and north uh, eastern branch uh, in the Anacostia watershed in Prince George's County. This to contribute uh, to comprehensive uh, larger scale watershed uh, restoration as a part of Sesapik Bay Potomac River Anacostia restoration through interagency collaboration and integration of actions. So, so this is, I mean, the, as, as we, we, we know that Anacostia has uh, the Prince George's County component and also the Montgomery County. So in this particular project, we specifically focus on Prince George's County. As the federal uh, program, we have to have a sponsor in this particular case, Prince George's County Department of Environment is the sponsor. So we work very closely with the, uh, uh, the county and in this um, civil program, um, I, I mean, you may know already, but I want to, uh, to give uh, how this works uh, with the civil program. Uh, under the authority, there are several programs and in which uh, the federal government funding comes, but it has to be matched by the non-federal um, sponsor. In this case, uh, it's Prince George's County. So um, the, these are the phases of the, the the uh, overall project feasibility phase, uh, design phase, construction phase. The one that I have in green, uh, which means that we somehow have secured or uh, the co co uh, commitment from the government to get this. So the good news is for the Anacostia Prince George's County project, we have the funding uh, to move forward. Um, the study was uh, hosted at 5050 between the federal government and county government and uh, the design and construction phase, federal government 65 percentage and non-federal government 35 percentage. Um, I'm getting an echo. Is it, everybody's mic is muted? Could everybody please mute yourselves? Because I don't know okay. how to do it. <laughs> All right. I, sometimes it it happens, uh, but you know we will we'll play accordingly. Um, so in this this the the currently we are in design phase. Um, at the end of the design phase, we already started working on it, and uh, at the end of the design phase, we will have set of plans and specifications. Uh, for six different sites. I'm going to show all those things with you uh, so we can really put the uh, construction contract out and then we start implementing. Um, so again, um, I don't, um, you all know, you are, you live and you own this, uh, this particular uh, project and uh, watershed. So I don't want to get into, but this is a larger scale, this a big way program under that. Uh, Potomac River watershed, which is the, the part of Sesapik Bay. Um, and, and I personally have a connection with Anacostia through Potomac River, where I, in Northern Virginia, I live in Potomac River watershed. So I have, beyond my uh, job function, I have my personal connection with, uh, with Anacostia, and I've been living in uh, Northern Virginia for the past 19 years. Um, so um, we all are somehow connected, and that's why I started. I, I, I feel like I'm blessed to be part of this this restoration uh, to get the right thing done. Um, and then, then we if you really look at um, uh, the Army Corps of Engineers involvement uh, with the Anacostia watershed, go way back a few decades. Um, Although I am new to Army Corps of Engineers, Army Corps of Engineers have been in the Anacostia for a long time. Um, initially started with navigation uh, to make sure that the, the, the passage of uh, vessels in the Anacostia appropriately. So um, I ended up with doing some dredging and uh, associated projects. But later in 70s, because of the, the, the flooding problem and the risk associated uh, with flood, uh, Army Corps ended up with uh, uh, building the levees and flood control structures. That's kind of a prominent uh, in 1970s and, and later. 
again, uh, as engineers, um, engineers are problem solvers. So we, we as, a, as and when we had the problems, um, we came up with the solutions at that time. But um, you all know that because of the, the, the flood control, because at the, the objective was to control the flood. So how fast you could send the water from the land to ocean, we avoid the uh, flooding risk. So that's how the, the, the designs and all um, have been conducted then. Uh, but that turned out to be a challenge for ecosystem and aquatic life. That's, uh, that's, that's how later uh, uh, Army Corps more focused on ecosystem restoration. Um, uh, the, this project is part of uh, ecosystem uh, restoration. So the, the objective here in this particular restoration is once uh, we constructed and installed all these uh, restoration effort, um, uh, this, the, 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 the stream will be self-sustained uh, self um, uh, and restore some functions. We cannot go back all, all the way for the natural uh, landscape or natural situation, but we try to restore the, the fundamental functions uh, of the, the, uh, the uh, near perfect or uh, uh, background condition. Um, so so that's, that's kind of a background and overall. Um, and then if we get into the specific to this one, I mean, again, uh, the, we, we had a, a project, uh, a, a comprehensive Anacostia watershed plan done in late 2000, I think that it's around 2008 or 2010 time period. Um, that's a comprehensive plan, including all uh, DC, uh, Montgomery County uh, and uh, the, the Prince George's County. Um, you might be familiar with that um, because I was a consultant at that time with the Prince George's County attending uh, meeting on behalf of or with the Prince George's County team. Um, uh, and that come up with a very number, I think that around 3,000 um, the, 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 the projects uh, uh, recommended. Um, so, but this one is more focused on the stream restoration. So, um, in the in the Anacostia part of the the Anacostia watershed, um, or the the human activities, uh, you know, result in in the watershed resulted in significant degradation of uh, aquatic life uh, through changes in hydrologic regime and then all the other associated effect. I um I will get there later. So. What the problem that we are having right now? I mean, these fixtures might be already familiar to you. Um, we have an unstable habitat. Um, it's, it's eroded uh, streams and, and, and then you have a deep homogeneous long um, channels and then you have fish blockages. Um, you have culverts, you have pipe crossing. So all these resulted in um, it, it is a, a human invasion into uh, the, the privacy of this, this species, um, uh, to be honest, and, and we all have to be shame on that. Um, so the, the, this anadromous, um, uh, the, the, the fish that used to travel all the way uh, upstream of this Northwest branch and, and other, uh, other tributaries no longer, um, because they, 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 they come and span in this, uh, this water and then after they spend the rest of their most of their life in the, in the ocean and then we they come back to the the, the streams for their uh, reproduction but we we really dis, uh, dis, uh, you know discontinued that one so this is an atom um, to to uh, build some of the basic functions uh, back and so that um, we can bring the uh, the, the habitat and aquatic life condition uh, reasonably uh, well so that they can travel where they are supposed to. So Army Corps of Engineers also part of the problem that uh, which for the aquatic life problem, not, not necessarily the whole uh, uh, um, lot in the, because of the flood uh, control structures haven't really um, had many uh, the consideration then in the 1970s when they built. Um, so, so we are in this particular project, we are trying to reverse some of the, the damages have done to these 
um, the, the, this ecosystem. Um, as a result, this, this species that um, we, we owe uh, them that we need to get them back on, um, uh, on, on, on track. Um, based on the data that we have, um, blueback, herring, and elvi and shape, uh, shape uh, all these uh, the species are not there anymore. And um, so the goal is to bring them back. And the, 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 now I'm going to go, so as I mentioned, we are, we, we are not going to bring everything uh, as perfect as was before, but try to, try to bring the functional elements back. So I'm going to spend a little time in this uh, 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 figure. Do you see my cursor? Can you follow? Um, okay. Um, yes. So the, okay, good. So uh, overall, the restoration project involved six sites. Um, we have six site number three, nine, and uh, thirteen. All these three in Northwest Branch that you are uh, more interested. Uh, in and then we have six site 15, 5, 11. So these are um, those are the three sites. So we have three sites in Northwest Branch, three uh, sites in Northeastern Branch. Um, the 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 orange line shows that's what the new restoration work that we are going to do. So here is uh, one that's, that's three and nine, and then we have uh, thirteen uh, go all the way up here um so that's uh, to bring the habitat and uh, towards the natural uh, stream um, conditions so and then if you re see this um two red color triangle those are the fish blockage uh, we are going to remove oops We are going to remove those uh, those blockage. If you really look at the the, the green uh, dots here, these are the two. This is the limit that uh, the fish is now coming upstream. They are not going beyond that. But if you see this this line here, uh, if you follow my cursor, that's the historical level. So the goal is. Um, uh, to to uh, send them as um, matches upstream, uh, bring the conditions so that they they would be able to travel up because they need certain conditions uh, for spanning and the production. I mean, you guys may know much better than I do on those because I'm not a biologist or ecologist, but um, uh, we work. We have the several experts in our team. Uh, those two who take care of uh, those uh, details. Um, so, but, and also, if you really look at the, the yellow uh, areas right here and this Northwest branch, this one, these are the past um, US Army Corps of Engineers effort. So now this project is going to link 14 miles of previously restored habitat with the new restoration. So now, we are really having a, a, a little bit of a comprehensive restoration once um, it's uh, it's it's done. So what we in terms because um, Anne was telling me more, you guys more interested in knowing more in the uh, the, the 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 fish passage and all. So I so if you really look at this this table, um, historical range in Northwest Branch is six point two miles. So they could go uh, up to up uh, six point two miles in the river. That's a historical range. Currently, we only have one point three percentage, which is um, twenty one percentage of the historical range. And with this uh, project, the way the the way we are going to make the restoration, that's going to get about eighty three percentage of the historical uh, the historical uh, uh, the range that uh, the fish could reach. Uh, similarly, uh, we have Northeast Branch. So with this restoration and with, with this, uh, this particular uh, one, which is, which is going, which is in line and support the Sisapik Bay Executive Order and Sisapik Bay Agreement goals of fish passage and fish habitat and stream health. 
Also, the, the, it, it, it's going to improve the habitat in stream where Army Corps of Engineers flood risk management project was contract, conducted way in 1970. And also, this further enhances with our previous uh, the restoration effort uh, by, uh, by Army Corps, especially in the paint branch and also the certain section in the Northwest branch under different programs of Army Corps of Engineers. And then uh, eventually restore the access to historical range of anadromous uh, fish in this watershed. So this is more um, what we would be going uh, doing here, and that what was going to uh, be a result of this restoration. Here I put that some um, sample pictures, if, uh, uh, pictures for you. This is what we have done in the past for. Uh, paint branch. The left uh, is left side is more of a before restoration. Uh, you could see that the the erosion and all, all the uh, the bank erosion and all, and then the the uh, even the fish blockage. And this is uh, on the, on your right side. Um, you are, you can see how the restored stream looked like. Uh, in the in the paint branch, uh, uh, the project, uh, all the recent um, good news is that uh, the all recent big streams all went uh, safely through uh, restored the the uh, restored stream. So this is this is what um, you guys I mean. Again, this is just the beginning of the design phase. Um, so um, I only can discuss now more of a. Uh, conceptually or what is in in plan and what is in design but when uh, said and done this is how it's it's going to be um, but I I really want to so as this is about the project so far what I have presented this is about the project that but I really want to share with you uh, again I mean you you guys know you've been on you you your fashion is in, on on this one but I really want to share with you my um, my philosophical approach and the experience um, how we can how we got there what we what we what did we do that make us to get there so that we can reasonably think this reverse reverse, uh, reverse engineering um, to make sure that these restorations are done right plus we sustain this restoration for a long time to come. So some of you already heard or seen these things, but I really want to share with you. So what did we do to get this, this uh, fish issue and, and, and all? Um, if you really look what we, we have, the beautiful, nice landscape with all the, uh, the, the, the vegetation and all, um, we converted that to uh, man-made structures. So when the rain falls on, um, we had plenty of space for absorb it or an infiltrate into the one. So this graph right here, um, this is a runoff in your y-axis, x-axis is your time. So when the time goes on, the runoff goes up, but it's more of a bell-shaped curve so that the uh, the runoff and passage uh, was Tim, very. We smooth. lost your. Uh, we lost your video. Did oh, you, you did. Yeah. Did you press um, stop share by accident? I still see oh, it, you. Anne. Oh, you still, still see, see it? it? Yep. I I lost it. Yeah, I do not see it. I don't no, see the presentation. How can some people see it and others not? Oh. oh no, I don't see it either. I don't see okay. it. Okay, let, let me let me stop it. sharing and, and resharing. Reshare, yeah. New word. <laughs> Can you? Yes. Okay, it's okay. back. Um, okay. Uh, but also your um, yeah yeah that's better. Okay. That's good. So so. Um, so, so, so this is this is how we have. So when when the runoff uh, occurs, uh, it's it's more smooth and with the less velocity, less force. Um, but when when we have we we build all these uh, the structures, uh, rooftops, uh, parking lots, uh, 
you know, gutters, curbs, uh, pipe system that really um, the really bring the larger amount of runoff with high intensity, high force. That's the this is the fundamental of uh, um, of this all uh, the fundamental of all these problems that we have. Um, I have been really uh, spending like my last my 20 plus years similar working on this particular graph itself i have done scientific research uh, or scientific studies or even policy related work or even supporting epa in drafting uh, npds permit all my work um is, is, is all on this particular uh, particular graph um, that's exactly so it's more of reversing the red one towards the 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 uh, blue one so that's pretty much i have been doing all my career um, whether that is a modeling work whether it is a research whether it is a now i'm more on the actual ground work of restoration so which really um, really rewarding for me uh, to involve in so let's let's so now the stream is just one component of a bigger picture. We will get into that discussion a little bit. So the natural stream, this is a kind of, I thought I like this one. This is a graphic, but it's, I like it because it's a very heterogeneous and, and it shows the variety here. Um, but because of all these urbanization, we built the streams like that. And with all these uh, blockage, uh, all these barriers that we have, plus deep channel, homogeneous channel. Um, so this is, this is what we are here um, to, to now reverse it. Um, so uh, if you really look at um, what is happening, because the hydrology, as I mentioned, hydrology is the, the, because of the land use changes, our activities, we have this hydrology, increased volume, increased frequency, increased, um, uh, velocity, force, and that change into channel erosion and riparian uh, destruction. So that's a geomological effect. And then that uh, combined into sedimentation and pollutant uh, associated with the sediment and all, that create a water quality issue. Then that leads to ecological issue. That's where we are now addressing of this aquatic life. This has happened for several decades of our action resulted in slowly, but chronically into this issue. Um, yes, we are fortunate. We are really working on reversing it, uh, but it is it is a multidisciplinary. Um, this is another way to look at this one. Um, we have a poor aquatic life. A poor aquatic life comes from uh, of, uh, bad conditions of the, the streams, lower dissolved oxygen, and also lower uh, habitat, and also you know the the, the bugs in in the macro invertebrates and all in the water. Um, we we tend to see more of a pollutant tolerant um, species than pollutant intolerant because we we have plenty of so so this I'm I'm not going to get into this one, but it is a complicated issue. Um, it's not like a if we fix the stream, it's not going to fix everything. That's why. Um, you know, Army Corps of Engineers, we come through um, uh, Water Resources Development Act and do all these work. In the meantime, um, EPA, US EPA, uh, in my previous job, um, I spent a lot of work for them in the NPDES permit and TMDL world um, in terms of uh, restoring these streams, more focus on water quality aspect, because that's another one. Um, if you really know, I mean, in the in the French Georges County, um, they have been doing a lot of work uh, to fix the source of the problem, which is um, immediately at the, um, the the sources of the problem where uh, the the drain gardens, bioretention, you you name all the the best management practices are being uh, put there. And, and you, you, they, they have the watershed implementation plan. I was uh, the one who developed for the county in order to meet the uh, Cesapeake Bay um, TMDL, nutrient TMDL requirements. So all this has to happen at the same time. It is happening at the same time. 
And what we are going, we are doing is a small part or one of the piece of the puzzles. Um, so, so in, in this kind of a work, it's, it's not easy, just one agency like Army Corps of Engineer or um, um, the, the Fish and Wildlife or National Park Service or US EPA do this one. That's why I spent after, because I was exports to this one early, about, about 20 years ago. So I, I worked with the Massachusetts Watershed Initiative Program with, uh, with the, the Watershed Associations. Um, but based on my uh, practical knowledge, I came up with the institutional model and, and that's my dissertation. But more importantly, this is a multidisciplinary uh, impact. Uh, in order to reverse this one, it requires local knowledge. That's what I'm here and, and you guys have that one um, and, and stakeholder engagement. And I'm trying to do that one in every one of my projects because that's the key to get the local knowledge into anything that we do uh, from a federal level or other government level and appropriately integrating science policies uh, and, and bringing the fund uh, uh, to, to, to resolve this one. And also it is very important to have multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary setup to access. So if you really look at, look at this wheel, um, I have published a few papers uh, in journals and this, this figure is there. And also I had this one in my dissertation. So um, equal and equal to the government, uh, the, the top level, um, we need to have the local knowledge, local decision making. And, and I spend a lot of time uh, looking at the watershed, uh, watershed management, watershed issues, and how these um, different watershed issues handle all over the world. I, I uh, pull about 200, 300 cases, what went right, what did not go right, um, all, all those things in my uh, work. And, and, and this, is, this is kind of a simple framework that always uh, important to have is that the left side you see government that I represent right now and I'm, I'm coming as a government officer, officer uh, to do this one because that's my job function um, under the government, uh, the authority of Army Corps of Engineers. We have this project. I'm coming to uh, implement this restoration effort by uh, my job function. That's the that's my motivation to be here. For you, you are coming because you attach to this watershed and you attach to this stream, but you do have the the local uh, knowledge and uh, wisdom on on this particular one, and plus the local government. So when you have this right balance, that's my my uh, my dissertation. And I had that you have to have a common platform to have this. Um, partnership between the government and the, the local um, the residents and organization like yours, then you really look at a problem, facilitate solving that one and, and build this partnership. That's how um, this would really uh, be meaningful and sustained for a long, ter long term. Um, one good example, and, and I, that's really my, uh, this was, I mean, I was fortunate to work uh, in, in Massachusetts, 1998 to 2003, um, the, the Massachusetts Watershed Initiative, um, really in five year period, uh, for some political reason, it couldn't really be, uh, go beyond that. But that really formed the core of so many things sold in that five years. So that's that's the in the that's that's when I, at that time I was at uh, Boston University as a graduate student, so that's kind of a formed my thought process uh, into uh, my dissertation later uh, in, into it. So having said that one, uh, I try my best. We don't have a mechanism here. However, I am um, trying in my projects to have this uh, partnership between government and. Uh, the, the local organization. That's what I'm here today uh, beyond my uh, job function um, and, and to spend this evening with you. And, and how, uh, so I put this, this slide, this is more of my um, professional opinion, um, how neighbors of Northwest branch can contribute to sustain the success. I'm more specifically with this uh, the overall picture to, to bring these uh, beautiful species that you have you see back in that one so i would 
uh, want you actively involve this this project that I'm working on. Um, I'm planning to have a quarterly stakeholder forum. Um, I have already uh, have the discussion with our, the county, and we are going to have a quarterly forum. So give the update um, to all the watershed associations and the, all the the group that um, involved, so that you. Um, you are not going to come at the end, so either we will keep you updated and receive your feedback um, every step of the way uh, in this design and then uh, it restoration process. Um, so um, I most probably I think beginning of the year, next year, we will have our first meeting. We just started forming all the teams and bring the, brought the expertise into this uh, design uh, work. But the other part is you guys um, could educate your neighbors and landowners to cooperate in this particular project. Because one of the challenges all over the, uh, the world and even several places of this kind of a pro uh, the, the restoration projects have challenges of uh, buying into. Even though I mean, certain people, we think that it's a straightforward, it's a benefit project to everybody, right? I mean, if, if, you are, if you're if the stream in your backyard, have these um, wonderful species out there and nice habitat, healthy water, that's a good thing. But so many challenges of um, getting into the easement and all um, the, the real estate issues. So good part about in this particular project is most of the land owned by park and planning, National Maryland National Park and Planning. So th that is part of the county. So I hope, hope and uh, hope that the, the process is going to be relatively easy. But um, other private owners, uh, if you educate them and if, if we, they are all in, 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 in this one, we can get this done in, in a more effective and faster, uh, faster phase. And then I would want uh, you, I mean, if you, you might be already, but I would want you understand other programs going on. For example, uh, county is putting so many best management practices all over the county. Um, I believe that there are thousands of acres of imperviousness to be treated in the county according to the, uh, their NPDES permit. Um, so really involved in those, and, and I'm, I know that they have uh, several incentive programs, uh, credit programs. Um, I'm pretty sure that you know the rain taxes. <laughs> I'm, I'm the one who uh, did the fee structure work for the county. Um, uh, to get the to get it passed in the in the uh, the, the 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 county uh, county government, so so that you are paying for that. So the, you have to be like a more vigilant on what's going on and try to engage um, yourself, and then further engage the electric uh, elected officials for appropriate decisions to be made at different levels: county level, state level, federal level. Um, you, you must have done a good job to, to bring us in here uh, over the years. Um, that's why we are here. But that's, that's really how um, the, these associations um, would really engage because, because you, you have the, so much of a stake in it. And, and continue with the events that you've been organizing to enjoy the river while being a watchdog to protect this great asset. So that's pretty much my my presentation and and we can now move to um the, the 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 discussion part so i will stop sharing and then we can see our faces myself um i see julie has her hand up julie did you want to ask a question I did, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, thanks so much for the presentation. It was really great. I just had a quick question. So the, um, well, two part question, I guess. The historical ranges for those fish, um, I'm curious how we know that. And um, I'm also curious, I, I didn't quite see on the map where the historical range for the fish ends on the Northwest branch. Um, it looked like it might've been somewhere near or slightly downstream of the fall line at Burnt Mills. Um, so I'm curious if migratory fish like that actually make it up past 
the the fall vine at burnt mills um or if there wouldn't really be much uh benefit for species if that uh, dam were to be removed okay very good question and um, you know my knowledge is after <laughs> But on that particular one is reading this comprehensive uh, feasibility study report. Uh, Army Corps has been, uh, had done a, a good job uh, in the feasibility phase and came up with this uh, recommendation for these six sites. So that report, um, in that report, it's, it's clearly, there, is, there are sections that, that clearly explain. Um, I believe that they have done some sort of a, a uh, and, and oh, I'm, I'm losing the, 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 the terminology right here, uh, the, the historical analysis, and they are looking at the data, they have gone through um, all the past data, that's how um, that, that particular line of the historic line was determined. And, and I think that the, the, the two things, one is first the historical line, and then the, the, the where uh, you, you, we, we, we are uh, uh, presently it, it, it is. So um, my knowledge on that one is the feasibility report. So I would um, refer you to, uh, that we uh, <laughs> get on that one to understand if you need, if you, if it anything specific, uh, we have at the Army Corps of Engineers um, the, the experts. Um, they are part of my team. Um, we can get there. So I, I, I did not answer your question because I don't know, uh, uh, but I think that I'm thinking loud how to get, where to get that answer. No worries, really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I think looking at that report would be really interesting. It's on our web page, uh, Army Corps of Engineers, Baltimore District web page. We have the entire uh, the, the report out there. Uh, maybe at, at, uh, I will share the link to Anne uh, in a few days and she can share with okay. the rest of the audience. Okay, I think I actually have um, heard from knowledgeable people that the fall line prevents the further migration of fish up. Um, and yet I have seen people fishing um, not, you know, sort of midway up and they seem to they seem to think they're going to catch fish. So, uh, and that's not just the trout that are that are dumped in and go on downstream, but fish that come up. So, um, but anyway, it has been said that the fall line prevents the fish from getting any farther up, and so taking out the dam at Burnt Mills really wouldn't have any effect on fish could have effect on other things, but not fish. Um, now, Patrick has his, Patrick's phone has his hand up. Patrick. Hey, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I'm in my car at soccer practice, so oh. I'm listening in. Um, thank you, Dr. Tam. Uh, not only am I an adjacent resident to Northwest Branch, but I'm also an environmental consultant. And I've spent a lot of years in the Anacostia watershed doing a lot of work and back in the early 2000s, I was part of the Woodrow Wilson Bridge Replacement Project. And I don't know if you're familiar with that, but we built eight different structures within Northwest Branch to assist in fish passage migration. Um, from the old fish, uh, that there was like a, a fish ladder at the Rhode Island Avenue location, all the way up to almost the confluence with Sligo Creek. And not only did we build these sites, we weren't so involved with water quality or bank stability or anything like that. We, we basically were trying to create a scenario where these types of Andromeda fish could swim above existing exposed sewer lines that were in the stream bottom. And we were also monitoring these sites for, I think it was about five years, up until almost like 2009. Um, where we not only looked for the presence and absence of fish during the, the, the spring migrations, but we, we also checked for eggs. So there's a lot of old data out there that if, if you're not familiar with it, or if you're not familiar with these sites, uh, I'd be happy to share it with you. Um, 
it was really my first foray into stream restoration and fish passage restoration, but um, it kind of got me started along this route. And that's really what I've been doing for the past 15, 20 years. And to answer the question, um, the fall line is definitely a blockage for Andromedus fish. There's certainly all kinds of game fish above the fall line. Um, but the, the herring and the shad, they're not like salmon that you see on the Nature Channel where they're jumping through the rapids and, and, and really getting above these. They're pretty, they have very slow burst speeds. And when we designed these structures in, in the streams in Northwest Branch, everything had to be taken into account for the, the way that these fish would be able to move through these structures to get upstream. So they're not like salmon. They don't have that type of energy where they can get through things that are a little bit more of a blockage that you'd be, you know, that you'd see on like one of the Discovery Channel type situations. So thanks again. That's, and thanks, Sam. This is my great. first uh, time Patrick. joining this. Yeah, it's my first time joining this. I'd like to join. Um, it came through our listserv, so I'm, I'm glad that I did. And, you know, it's a, something that interests me. So. So you you already found in this uh, this uh, uh, presentation a resource that you have, uh, in, in you already have. So um, he's he's an asset for you. Um, so make use of him. Um, and 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 the yeah, it's like a the with with army. I mean, I'm I'm new, but the the team, the project delivery team that I'm working on is not new. They have been. Uh, you know, some of them even uh, working on this particular uh, Anacostia watershed more than 10 years uh, from the initial comprehensive plan all the way to uh, the, 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 uh, the, the feasibility study. So, yeah, I, I think that the next time when we have this uh, forum, um, I will bring experts so that we can have more meaningful uh, uh, discussion on uh, fish and uh, this, uh, the ecological aspect. Because that's why I started with a disclaimer. I'm an engineer. <laughs> I, I know very little about right. fish, but yeah. I'm working towards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Melanie. I think you're next. Hi. So those um, those those downstream. Well, I think of them as downstream. <laughs> those barriers on the um, northwest branch that you're working on in this project. About about how large are they? And um, are, are people still thinking about the snakehead and whether or not that's they wanted barriers in place to stop them from moving or, or did we give up the ghost on that and just assume they were everywhere? Well, I, I don't, again, <laughs> that's why this is, a, this is an, an ecologist <laughs> aspect, <laughs> uh, but uh, the, 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 again, the, the, the those two blocks, uh, uh, I think that we identified those barriers considered to be uh, limiting the, the movement. So um, how we are going to remove those and what are the, uh, the, the details of those things, um, I have to tell you that you have to stay tuned <laughs> and wait, uh, we will get into those details in the design. Um, and what okay. exactly, because we are going to do a, uh, a surveying and a lot of our field work to collect more data and then come up with the, okay, this is the method, how we uh, facilitate the passage. And, and, and the, my plan is to, to, when we come up with those recommendation or alternatives, we will have some uh, uh, discussion with the, the, the interested group like yours so that um, we can even collect. I mean, you might come and say, oh, this is not going to work. Uh, are you kidding? <laughs> so that kind of a things I want to facilitate as a, man uh, as a project manager to, to bring that input because that's, that's key for our success. Okay, thanks. That gives me a lot better understanding of where you were in the project. I hadn't quite yeah, realized yeah. that um, you weren't really uh, you know, conceptually designing the structures yet or anything like that. Thanks. Um, and uh, Donna, you're up. So my question was going to be uh, what stage of design 10, 30, 60%, but I guess you're in very preliminary stages. I would like to put in my two cents in case I don't make it to the next, um, to your stakeholder meeting for feedback that 
um, that the project consider <clears throat> optimizing opportunities to reconnect the stream to the floodplain rather than simply stabilizing the banks and the channel. And I realize the alignment that you have now are uh, the streams are in highly developed areas like in Adelphi and whatnot. But if you are working through parks land that you not just limit restoration to the channel and 20 feet of riparian area on each side, but that you look at side channels and low areas where wetlands and vernal pools and oxbows can form and where the high waters can actually um, overflow the banks into the floodplains. Yeah, that's a good point. And, and again, we need to get into the, uh, the, the nut and bolts of uh, the things. Uh, but but uh, these six sites, um, if, if you really look at these, uh, the, the feasibility study, um, we have gone through extensively, I believe uh, started with 10 plus sites and they have um, uh, conducted an economic analysis of uh, uh, the, the, the cost benefit and all. So this, this um, um, six came out to be the optimum sites for your investment, uh, the best out outcome for the investment. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty sure that experts who have worked on have looked at uh, certain aspects of uh, what you mentioned. Um, uh, but I believe that we'll keep that keep an eye on all those. And in fact, a certain um, it's it's certain uh, segments um, we uh, are relocating the the channels. Uh, if, if I if I, I if I understand correctly, in the northwest branch, upper uh, uh, the upstream northwest branch, certain segments are going to be relocated. Um, so, 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 so the, those are the, the, the. So again, the, the, we need to get into the details. Um, we have to zoom in now. I mean, today's my objective is to give you the outline of what we would be doing, and and then progressively um, we zoom in to the details. Um, so. I appreciated the input. Um, I will pass this to the experts that we have in our team. We have a we have a team of experts working on on this project. Um, if I could follow on to Donna's question, um, I'm intrigued. The um, Army Corps, when it first went in with the objective, of course, to prevent flooding, it channelized the Northwest Branch, took out all the little. Um, curves and whatnot that it once had. And also undoubtedly, um, it then separated totally from its floodplain. Um, so here now that part of the Northwest Branch in Prince George's is pretty much a trench. And they just uh, raised the berm because of course we're getting more water these days. So there's even more risk of flooding. Um, but that was the, at that time, that was the, how shall I say, the guiding principle of the Army Corps of Engineers was just put everything in a trench and build a high berm and voila, you know, no flooding. Um, I hope that the, the thought, the thinking process there has now changed at the Army Corps so that uh, it's more obvious, ecological. No, obviously it did change. I mean, that's why I'm, I'm here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's why people like us are here. And, and, and this particular one, I mean, in this particular restoration, our objective is um, to bring the, the functions of natural uh, stream functions. I mean, sometimes, you, you know, natural, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you guys understand, uh, know that uh, Roskin, uh, the, the, the approaches and all, which is a, uh, which is a natural uh, stream design principles. Uh, so, so bring that back. So, and, and yes, we have done uh, in the past some damage uh, of, as you mentioned, but this is how we reverse this one. This is more of a reverse engineering. <laughs> um, 
it, it's 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 uh, it's unfortunately that's how I mean scientists and engineers ob, 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 uh, the, the operate based on observations. I mean you have seen very clearly during this pandemic, right? At the beginning of this pandemic, we only know little, uh, but now we know more than more than and and. So, but but we take it, um, we adapt. Um, so that's what we are here. Uh, but one thing I want to emphasize clearly: our restoration effort is more towards um, uh, the natural stream functions, uh, bringing back natural stream function. We are not focusing a, 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 on water quality or anything else. That's a different. I mean, that's that's how the the that's how uh, our you know the segregation of government or whatever that it is, uh, because US EPA and Clean Water Act is focusing on that. That's what counts. But the, <laughs> so the, the, the county is uh, uh, in, in both. So that's the, that they are the link uh, for the stream restoration uh, effort to, to, to bring the ecosystem functions uh, back. And they are working on the, the BMPs, best management practices and all that is to bring the hydrological function back. So these all have to work together to get the final benefit. Mm -hmm. so, Thank you. Well, of course, uh, this, the stream now being in its channel, it doesn't have a whole lot of space to go anywhere else. Um, so I think the options may be a little bit limited, but anyhow, um, I'm sure you'll do the best that's possible. Um, Kathy, Kathy, you're next. Hi, um, thank you, Tim, for a, a really interesting presentation. And so I, you may have partially answered my question was, um, will the Army Corps and partners take this opportunity to address um, pollution um, and water quality pro problems, particularly um, runoff um, from roads, um, which uh, carry all sorts of pollutants. Um, we, we know a lot more, uh, for example, um, about tire wear particles, as you may know, they're killing all the salmon, uh, salmon runs in the Northwest and um, presumably uh, uh, sickening and, and at least debilitating uh, probably aquatic life in, in all of our streams. So I was wondering if uh, the opportunity will be taken to somehow um, mitigate uh, some of the runoff that goes directly um, from roads through stormwater pipes and, and other other ways so that was my question yeah that's that's good point and i think that we uh, the good news is department of environment of prince george's county um that is our partner in this one they are the one um the same department uh, working on compliance with the uh, NPDES permit and also the to total maximum daily load tmdl implementation uh, effort um so so yes um we, we we in our our focus i mean if you really look at that the, the complex uh, uh diagram that i showed there uh, because it's 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 a it's a it's a complex issue to be uh, we have to admit that one but we have several uh pieces of solutions uh, stream restoration is one of the important things uh, as well as others and we focus on that um when but in my team uh, when we look at all the things, say, for example, if you have three options, three uh, equal options out there, yes, then we, but our objective is more to bring the natural stream functions back. That's our main objective. But uh, if you have three options, one option really, they, all three options give you the same function uh, of the stream restoration or stream function, but one option have higher water quality benefit, we would choose that one. So, so that's that's because um, we all uh, do care about uh, the 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 whole picture, not just even though we are working on a smaller component of it. But we do uh, care of or we won't all achieve the bigger picture. Uh, one water quality is one of them, as you rightly pointed out. Um, well, if you have um, a situation where you're getting a whole lot of sediment that comes off of hmm, places that are, well, 
comes off of roads, comes off of dirt heaps, comes off of everything anyway. Um, comes off also of, of surging water down the channel and comes from the stream banks. Um, you're not going to have a very good fish habitat. So I would think that part of restoring fish habitat would be um, controlling the stormwater and what it carries into the stream. I think that we are talking about, say, just, just for the discussion purpose here today, um, sediment is the source, right? Um, sediment uh, was the source. So sediment comes from primarily two uh, places. One is bank erosion itself. Uh, it, it, it bring that one. And the other one is coming from parking lots or the upstreams. Um, this is this is one of uh, you know I, I don't want to get there, but in the, one of the, my my I was asked to develop a sediment TMDL uh, in Massachusetts. That's in 1999. Mm -hmm. um, that's the first one of the first TMDLs. So I was asked to develop the sediment TMDL, and I went and looked for the 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 sources of sediment. Where are these come from, and how can I uh, set the target? Uh, so, but it's primarily stormwater. So that it's mainly stormwater. So I pretty much, I, I, if you look at my hydrograph that of the pre and post development, that's what you got to do. You got to go and put the best management practices that really trap the sediment uh, before it enter into the into the stream. So put the, the at that time we were only uh, uh, designing ponds. So we added. Uh, four base uh, sediment, four base, and all in order to uh, to trap those things. So, so in uh, so for so after some time, that's not enough, right? For example, if you really look at a, a pond that only have a maybe 30, 40 percentage of the sediment uh, retention, or uh, so that have changed over the years. Some better design in terms of uh, sediment handling. Um, and of course, the infiltration, bioretention, and all the other other things um, out there. So yeah, I agree with you. Um, the 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 what we are in this particular project, we are foc We definitely going to uh, eliminate the stream source, bank erosions, and bank eroded. But coming from these parking lots or coming from the upstream, have to be controlled by best management practices. Uh, that best, but the good news is, the good news is now, and we are in 2021. We have so many regulations. Uh, we have because in in at the time when I started working in 1999, uh, at that time, very few regulations, even local uh, regulation. Now you, have, but the more important, if as long as we implement these regulations and we put the practices in right. <laughs> Enforcement is the problem. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's it's. We have a long way to even get into that because I was I was working to put no net runoff increase into the regulation for a long time. So which means that the the hydrograph to the the if you are going to come and look for a um, look for a new development. So your 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 ordinance your ordinance have to tell that you can't have you can build it there but you cannot have the the additional runoff so you have to control your runoff there that's the first step that's I'm talking about early the the early 2000 and later then you know you have to mimic the the natural uh, so it's it's it evolved um, further but the I mean, at least by knowing the Prince George's County, within my knowledge, um, they are going to put so much of uh, best management practi practices um, through their NPDES program. And you might be knowing, uh, seeing that uh, uh, all over, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Um, OK, well, uh, Frank has a question, hasn't been answered yet. Frank, you're up. Hey, Tam. Um, thanks very much for the presentation. Uh, very interesting stuff. And I'm glad that um, the Army Corps of Engineers is working on the Northwest Branch and the habitat um, in the riparian area of, of the stream. My question is concerning tributary streams that feed into the Northwest Branch. Um, 
I live in a neighborhood in Silver Spring, Maryland, and I've noticed just in some of the tributaries in our neighborhood, we've had a lot of erosion, a lot of bank erosion, um, a lot of construction debris that's been de top deposited in there that facilitates um, increased um, stream flow and runoff whenever we get large rain events. Um, not a lot of rain gardens to slow um, water flow into these tributaries that then flow into the Northwest Branch. So my question to you is, um, to what degree, if any, is the Army Corps looking at some of these tributary creeks and streams that flow into the North Northwest Branch and looking at any sort of remediation work in these tributaries um, or even further upstream to kind of, um, you know, slow down some of the um, increase water flows from big storms and that kind of thing. Thanks. Thank you. Um, it's, it's a very good, um, a good point, but it's all tied to our, our uh, previous discussion about these two sources and how we are handling uh, these two, uh, the, the major sources. Um, for the time being, the project that I am managing right now, we have a very uh, very targeted uh, locations, uh, reaches, uh, those identified uh, in that feasibility study, that's what we are focusing on um, uh, and get it restored. Uh, it doesn't include a small streams feeding into the Northwest branch, but Sligo, um, Sligo Creek, um, that the, the, uh, I think that I'm pronouncing it correct, uh, close, I guess, Sligo. Um, so, so Sligo, Sligo, Sligo. Okay, sorry, Sligo. Um, so that that portion, yes, will be uh, uh, addressed. Um, but again, the the, the uh, you 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 Frank, you mentioned a very good point because the these small streams are now uh, started to get the stress. Um, if you if you really look at my presentation, because um, the, the, the hydrology, you know, everywhere are, we are increasing the, our imperviousness for some reason. And, and for our convenience, we send it them faster. Um, even though the, 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 the regulation require bioretention out there, um, we don't know how much of this uh, bioretention functioning, right? So it's, it's all have to function, right? So it's like a so that's why you, um, this neighbors of uh, Northwest Branch, has a larger role uh, uh, to play. Um, we, you could even you could have a subcommittee uh, for uh, these small tributaries. Um, as as I mentioned, like you got this is this is our problem. It's not like a federal government problem uh, or uh, the county's problem. It's our problem. Um, um, and 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 and. You know, I mean, if if uh, if bioretention doesn't function properly, or if if, uh, if, uh, if a pond um, has a excess uh, sediment in it, it won't function as it was designed. So it's it's somehow you, you, you mean the county may have a six every six month they have a maintenance program or inspection program. I mean, we all I mean all of us have uh, resource limited. So, but if you bring uh, the attention to them that might uh, get a higher a higher priority so i don't i can't answer your question because um the, the my to, to my ability as a project manager for this project we have a very specific target and a very specific uh, uh, restoration but this should continue beyond this project and that's why I, I really want to, to, to engage my uh, sharing knowledge with you. And don't expect that Army Corps F engineers come and do this project. This project uh, problem is going to go away right away. That's a bad, uh, 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 because that's, that's, a, that's kind of a passing your responsibility to somebody. That's, um, and that's a human tendency, right? And I, I'll ask my wife, okay, whenever certain things come, can you take care of it? You know. Once you take care of it, my job is done. I mean, that's how we all function. That's it. So. Thank you. Um, and now Donna and Julie, you still have your hands up. Um, did you just simply not take them down or? No, did I you... took them down, took my hand down and put it back up. But put it back now, up. Okay. I remember everything. 
Yep, uh, same here. Um, well, okay, let's have Donna first and then Julie. So um, at the risk of repeating myself, um, I do <laughs> appreciate the fact that the core is focusing on restoring habitat, um, ecosystem uh, functions. Um, and not focusing on water quality standard, or I mean water quality, which will come if you restore properly. And then again, you also mentioned the sediment that you're handling, you're addressing the sediment coming from the erosion within the channel, but not, um, not coming from runoff. But again, if you reconnect the streams to their floodplain, much of that will be taken care of because the sediments will settle out in the floodplains. That's what they do and they accrete. And so I just can't stress enough. And also Anne mentioned um, how, you know, how can the fish live in a stream with all this pollution coming downstream, but it's not just the pollution, but it's the velocity of the water. And we cannot restore the function, the basic functions, ecosystem functions of a stream if we don't address the hydrology and the hydraulics. And we cannot restore hydrology if we do not reconnect the streams to their floodplains. So please, please, please take that back to your team. And the natural channel design, which was originated by Mr. Rosgen, was really based out from the West, Colorado, Rockies, Montana, where the stream structures and the sizes are, and the geomorphology is so different. And it has come a long way and we've applied it here on the East Coast with, where the streams are smaller and don't have such um, steep slopes. But we've really used it to stabilize the channels that we have, what's already be, been channelized. And there are other stream restoration approaches that have since been developed, um, like legacy sediment removal and regenerative stream restoration, stream conveyance. And so I urge the core to look at the sites and really design what is most appropriate mm -hmm. for the site rather than just apply natural channel design. And legacy sediment removal and regenerative stream conveyance designs are focused on restoring the natural functions of the stream. That's it. <laughs> well, that's, um, that's very impressive points. And uh, the, I couldn't, disagree with you, uh, you know, I, I couldn't agree with you more than 200 percentage on uh, uh, the hydrology is the cause of the problem. Um, I was the first author um, published uh, a paper and then came up with the methodology using the, um, the flow duration statistics, a flow duration curve, uh, fixing the flow duration of a stream is the the first step towards fixing uh, the the fixing aquatic life? Um, I came up with this methodology. It took uh, I I wrote this uh, one in two thousand. In two, it took six years for US EPA to approve that methodology as a TMDL uh, methodology. Um, and and uh, as a result, um, the the Massachusetts uh, and then. Uh, Vermont and then other states, which I don't know now how many states have been using as the uh, stormwater and hydrology as an umbrella target. So for example, because the, the, the habitat and aquatic life is a, is a it's, it's, you cannot clearly uh, tie to one stressor. It's a many stressors out there. So so that's why I use this umbrella because in the TMDL development, you have to figure out, okay, how much your high flow needs to be knocked down or how much uh, of your, uh, the base flow to be increased. Um, so so that, that, that methodology came from me and I had a few um, journal publications on that. 
Um, I agree with you um, uh, totally on that part. But uh, the so we, we are I agree we we are in a you know what in this country we have been doing what a quality is addressed by EPA and and the, the the other agencies so we have the limitation but in this particular project um, we do focus on that one uh, natural stream design is the basis uh, or, or the fundamental to begin with I agree with you I will bring the uh, uh, you, you know, because the, I, I also, uh, Andrew Simons, I work with him uh, 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 beyond, because, he, you know, Roskin and Simons sort of come from two different um, uh, ap appro approaches. So what I will, I mean, I'm, not, I'm the project manager, so I have experts at Army Corps of Engineers, but I can, I will challenge them um, through, what, what, through your, your input. Uh, and to, to make sure that these considerations are going to be incorporated in our outcome of this project. Appreciated the input. Okay, thank you. Um, and um, Julie. Okay, hopefully this will be an easy one for you to answer. Um, I'm curious, um, and if you aren't doing this, I would encourage you to do it, but I'm guessing you already are. So I'm curious how you're incorporating um, changes in um, rainfall frequency and intensity impacting stormwater uh, due to climate change, how you're incorporating those uh, forecasts for that increase in, in your design process. All the things that I presented today, I forgot to mention, assuming that climate is not changing. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I agree with you. Um, I, I think I, I, the climate change um, that's adding, I mean, it's unfortunately climate change worsening the, the, uh, the, the issue and impact and, and, and our uh, effort to, um, to reverse it. Yes, we will, um, we will have that consideration uh, in, in our overall approach. I don't know how deep into, but that's going to be uh, in it, and, and especially when it comes to a um, to a evaluations of our uh, our uh, the, the 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 extreme events like hundred year and all all those the largest storms uh, to be evaluated that should be and uh, that will be considered. Awesome. Oh, I'm oh. curious. Does the core does the Army Corps have updated forecasts related to that um, or any kind of system that they've been using so far to take into account changes from climate change? I don't know the answer for that, uh, but I will uh, check uh, uh, check into uh, into that. Maybe I can get back to you. Awesome, uh, this thanks. Is, oh, this is Brittany from the Corps too. Um, we have a water management team. So yes, we can check with them and see if we have any information regarding that, which I, I believe we do. I don't want to say yes for sure, but we do have a water management um, team that solely works on um, projects that we work with uh, water. And I, I'm pretty sure we'll have uh, surveys regarding that. Um, so we'll get back to you on that um, once we, we ask our water management team and they're pretty responsive. So um, we can always get back to you on that certain inquiry. Okay, awesome, thank you. Thank you, Brittany, I'm glad you could join us. I didn't, um, I didn't see you right at the outset or I would have introduced you too. <laughs> oh no, you're okay. Yeah, I was having um, some issues. So I had to get on my phone and I downloaded Zoom, so I was, about three minutes late, <laughs> but uh -huh. um, I just wanted to chime in on that part. Yeah, well, you were on page two and I can only see page one. <laughs> uh, oh. Yeah, um, the way, it, you know, the way it spreads out. Um, Quick okay, question, we, Brittany. I'm sorry, the link that you sent to us, Brittany, um, I just scrolled real quick. Does Do we get access to the feasibility study that Dr. Tom was, Tam was referring to? Let me, it, it should be on the webpage. If it's not, um, I will put that on by tomorrow. Um, yeah, Tam and I, if 
I don't see it on here actually. I'm looking now. So yes, I will put that on there and I can also send the link to Anne, um, but I will make sure that's on there because I'm looking at the webpage now and I don't see it. So I apologize. Yeah, that's anything a that comes to me, I can, I can put it out on the listserv, um, but now not everybody is on the listserv. So okay. um, people who want the information, if you're not on the list, sir, um, it would be good to, to email me that you want it for, for anything that you can't get directly from the Army Corps website. Um, we'll make sure to put that on there too. So I will, I will get that to you, Anne, but um, that should be on the website. So I will make sure that is so that everyone can get it. And even people who uh, want to join your, your group um, and they're not in it yet, um, you know, they can go to our, our webpage and hopefully find it. So I will put that on tomorrow and I will also send that to you, Anne. Okay, great. We also have a list, a, um, a database and some people here may have um, maybe in the database because at some point they helped us or made a donation, um, but they're not on the list there. So <laughs> you know, we have the two, <clears throat> two things going. Anyway, we are approaching the end of our time and my goodness, it's been exciting. Uh, and thank you ever so much. We have something for you, which since you're not there, um, I don't know, can you, you see this lovely? Yep. Lovely reusable bag. <laughs> uh, I love that. If you can give me a mailing address, I have um, one for Brittany also. Um, then um, I will mail them to you. And we hope that the US Postal Service will do its job <laughs> and, and deliver <laughs> um, sooner or later. Um, They'll deliver later. before Christmas. <laughs> yeah, hopefully before Christmas, right. Um, yeah, but we can handle that um, after after the Zoom. But that, let us, do you all know how to do a clap on the, um, on the reactions? To get our reaction and nice clap. Well, you can also do it that way. <laughs> but thank you ever so much both of you, uh, and we will be looking to see what happens next. <laughs> yes, thank you, Anne, thank and you, thank, thank you, you everyone. very much. You are a great audience. <laughs> thank you. Also, um, now I have been recording. I'm gonna stop recording right now, as soon as I find the stop recording button. Um,